to the old version of patient access, which is still available and you can use it. And this is what it looks like, the same information on that screen. And if you click on the I button there, it takes you to lab tests online, which tells you about the cholesterol test result. What is it, why get tested, when to get tested, sample record. Um, common questions, my doctor told me I had a high cholesterol, but instead of treating me, he told me with a few, wait a few months and test it again. What I found is that when patients have access to this information, they're less, they, they don't ring up the surgery to say, what does that test result mean, it's abnormal. Most of the, answers get, most of the questions get answered by, by this link to lab test online. Letters, you can see all the letters that are there. Um, at the moment, this is what it looks like. It's a little bit harder, so you've then got to sort of scroll to have a look at the whole page. But on the old system, that's what the letter looks like. It's very clear to read. Yeah, this, by the way, the Mickey Mouse Teaching Hospital, was done by one of my patients who said the test record doesn't have a letter on there because I can't scan a real patient's record with a letter in. So the patient said, well, can I do a letter then? Um, and so they've done a little, a, a funny little letter. It's well worth reading it. But again, it's a beautiful example of the partnership of trust. Our patient has decided, they've obviously had a lot of contact with hospitals, and they decided to take a, a Mickey Mouse one. And in the medication section, you can see the immunizations that that patient has had. So imagine a baby who's got a rash. Are they fully up to date? Well, you'd be able to see all the immunizations they have. Current medications, repeat medications, and then further down, past medications. Um, records by system, it's the same thing as what I said with the summary care record, but you can then look at specific aspects. So for instance, if we go into prevention of disease, you can see um, all the all these things that have been going on to try and prevent um, illness. So, spirometry screening, mental health reviews, etc., etc. It's just a way of presenting the information that's in that record in a more meaningful manner for the patient. The practice website. I've shown you the public side. I'm now just going to show you the intranet side because there is an intranet for the practice staff. Um, and so we've got a homepage on there. And on there, you can put in the messages uh, that you want your practice staff to be able to look at. One of the key things about the website is the www, so they can do it even though they're on holiday or working part time. They can access it from anywhere. Uh, so you can put messages in, links in, and things. We put our sign translate um, link there. So if you've got someone who's deaf, they can just go onto the internet, click on that, and then that opens up the page for them so that they can then start to talk to a patient using sign translate. Uh, we've got an um, event section, so you can put in um, events. So we'll put our events in, so the next PPG meeting, that's where we actually do it. And it automatically puts that information onto the relevant parts of the website that the public can see. So you're not having to go into each page and change it. We've got a document management system. So in there I've got all my referral forms, um, policies and procedures. We just got a 186 page document on the new cloth guidance that PCT has sent. Uh, it's no good having it on the internet in the practice because we're not going to read it then, but actually let's post it onto the website so that clinicians who might want to look at it at whatever time of the day or night, they can go ahead and do that. And then the final bit is the how do you actually change the website? Well, the website itself has, um, is fully content editable, so we don't pay uh, an expensive third party to change the web page. This is what it looks like. When you go into the edit, as long as you know how to use Word, you can edit it on the fly from anywhere. Um, so I can just edit it, change the text as I want. In a real-time digital world, if you've seen something this morning and you think, I need to tell patients, what you don't want to do is send it to somebody and wait three months before it gets changed. I can do it on the fly. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, rush through things so we've got to 8 o'clock. We were the first practice, as I mentioned. We've now got over 700 patients. There are actually over 40 practices around the country now that are offering record access, and the numbers are going up as more and more hear about it. Um, in fact, every single EMIS practice in the country is already switched on, so all EMIS practices could be doing this straight away. Um, but at the moment, as far as I'm aware, there's about 40 practices that are actually actively going out and recruiting people and telling people about it. The decision to do it, by the way, is by the clinicians in the practice. The, the, the technology is there, it's a matter of just switching it on, uh, but it's down to the practice to determine whether they do it or not. Okay, just a couple of case studies, just to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the things I've seen. I got a phone call about a few months back um, from um, a doctor in, from France. Um, it was in the middle of surgery. My receptionist turned around and said, Doc, there's a doctor from France who's rang up. This was a patient in their late 70s um, who had chest pains, been admitted into hospitals on the coronary care unit. Um, and this doctor was saying, Doc, we've stabilized your patient, um, pain free now. He's got all sorts of drips up, but he keeps saying to me, he wants to put some passwords into a website so that we can look at his medical record. What the hell? 
hell is he talking about? <laughs> and if I told you this was a patient who's had a quadruple bypass and the aortic valve replaced, is in a foreign land where they don't speak English, and at that moment in time, the only person that can save his life is that doctor on that chronic care unit, you can suddenly start to understand what this is all about and how the patients who are getting it are then starting to say, I need this, rather than, hmm, what's all that about? Um, I had a patient who had to go for a pre-op assessment recently, turned up at the hospital and the notes were missing, and you know, two hours later and they were still missing and they couldn't find it. And the patient turned around and said, well actually I've got my access, do you want to see all the letters, do you want to see what's been going on? And the anaesthetist looked at them strangely and thought, yeah, go on then, looked at it, sorted the patient out, the patient went home while they were still trying to find the notes. It happens, it's unfortunate, but patients got access to the records, turns up to pre-op assessment, sorted. Um, I've got a patient who unfortunately has the same name and date of birth as another patient in the same practice. He's actually a child, interestingly, but he's got so fed up of getting the long letters in his notes and things, that he now looks at his own records, checks everything, and if there is something that goes in there that it's because he's not had access to it, he tells his mum, and his mum then rings up the surgeon and says, you put the notes in the wrong letters, and you put it in the other one. You'll laugh, but it happens. <laughs> um, Patients have identified errors in the records. Interestingly, they don't get angry about it. They just want their record to be right. That's what they want. As a clinician, that's what you want. Oh, see me. Thank you very much. I didn't realise we've not got heart disease in your record. Yet. The fact that you've got diabetes when you haven't. So identifying records, big issue. Um, the quality of the consultation I mentioned earlier has changed from one where I'm just giving them this is what your test results are to a discussion about what does it mean for you and how can we help you and what do you think about it very much the traditional, what the doctors used to do, and what nurses used to do, and it's, it's a really nice place to be actually, because they're asking for our opinion about things, rather than getting us to just read off the screen what, what the x-ray result is. Um, and then this is a real biggie. What's very, very obvious is that once you let patients look at that information, the level of trust that those patients have in you and your organisation just goes up massively, massively, and, and the trust that they have with the patients and with the practice and everybody just goes out simply by that paradigm shift, that switching it on and letting patients decide for themselves if they want it. We talked about the iPhone earlier, well there you are. I've got a patient who actually sits in the waiting room and on his iPhone reminds himself of test results, consultations and everything else so that when he comes in he's absolutely prepared. The technology is there now, it can be done, we have it now. And it's very exciting, I've stand around, you know, I've presented around the world and people have gobsmacked. This is the only country in the world really where we could do this kind of stuff. And it's very, very exciting. At a time when everyone's like, the NHS this and the NHS, well, you know, we can do it. And actually, you guys can now do it. You've got it in your own practice. And how exciting is that?